Hey guys, welcome to my Razer Chroma Series video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for daily tech videos. I'm gonna move that reminder to the beginning of my video, see if that makes a difference. Anyway, don't worry too much about that. Now, RGB custom color headsets and mice aren't exactly new. And neither are the Razer Death Adder Mouse Kraken 7.1 headset or Black Widow Ultimate 2014. But this is the first time we've seen those two things together. Cooler Master Neptune Series CPU coolers are available in a variety of radiator sizes to perfectly suit your next build. Click now to learn more. Let's start with the simplest of the three, the Kraken 7.1 Chroma, which is basically just a straight carbon copy of the Kraken 7.1, but I'll give you guys a brief rundown on it anyway. It's got 40 millimeter neodymium drivers, a headband with size adjustments and folding, the ear cup swivel for a good fit against your head, and it connects to your PC with a braided USB cable. The software includes surround calibration, some dials that you can use to tune the integrated sound card. I'd recommend turning down bass boost, by the way, more on that in a minute, a mixer in case the one in Windows wasn't enough for some reason, an EQ, which is actually nice to have included, and finally, lighting controls, of course. You can choose between any solid color, breathing in any color, and cycling through the entire 16.8 million color spectrum. And I guess this seems like a good opportunity to point out how responsive and bug-free the software is, but also how limited these options are. Two-color breathing and breathing rates, as well as color cycle speed adjustments, would be welcome additions to this product. If I thought it made any sense to buy it anyway, um, unless you must have RGB lighting on your headset, I don't really recommend the Kraken 7.0 one at hundred dollars. Even with bass boost off, lows are very overpowered to my ears and the microphone is, well, I'll, uh, I forgot to press record over here. So I'm going to do that now and I will let you evaluate that for yourself. Now, while I'm sure Min Lang is in the process of writing an angry tweet to me, um, I guess this might help to stay his hand because with the death adder chroma, it's a very different story. This seems to have gotten some very tangible improvements over the Death Adder 2013. Ergonomics are still a strong point. The rubber side grips still feel great, but now the braided cord is one of the best I've ever encountered with almost no kink left after back bending. The right and left click are significantly heavier so I don't accidentally press them constantly. And the sensor has been, uh, uh, I don't know what word you'd wanna use for this type of interpolation tomfoolery. So let's just say overclocked to 10,000 DPI or CPI if you prefer, from 6400 in the original Death Adder 2013. So next time you're gaming at the local IMAX, you can crank that the lighting is better implemented than with the Kraken, but still kind of incomplete feeling. The Razer logo on the back supports the same modes as the Kraken's, so solid, breathing, and cycling, but the scroll wheel doesn't support breathing for some reason, so that's the bad news. The good news, though, is that unlike the headset, the mouse supports different lighting schemes when your mouse profiles auto-switch as you launch various programs. Great inclusion, and I really like how smooth the color transitions are. Very neat. Which leads us, finally, to the Black Widow Ultimate Chroma. This is my second Black Widow Ultimate 2014, and if you didn't show me the lighting tab in the software, well, I probably would never know the difference. You can get my full thoughts in a review here. But in a nutshell, it's still got a matte black finish with subtle frosted lock key lighting and a shiny Razer logo at the bottom. It's still got five extra macro keys on an otherwise standard layout where every key is fully programmable and, however you may feel about this, it still uses Razer's own branded mechanical key switches manufactured by Kyla in China due to the constrained supply of Cherry MX switches. Back to that lighting tab in the software again though, the keyboard obviously got the most attention from Razer's devs. In addition to auto profile switching and the modes that the other devices support, the keyboard gets a sweet wave pattern that can run either left to right or right to left, but regrettably doesn't support custom colors or speed alterations. It gets a reactive mode that fades incredibly smoothly and looks really nice, and a custom mode that you can use to either apply profiles for a variety of genres or even specific games, or or build your own according to your preference. I went with a combination of hot pink and purple that I think looks absolutely fabulous. So it's conclusion time, and I'm finally going to address the elephant in the room. Razer's Chroma products are not the only RGB gaming products to be released in the last month or so. So who has the best RGB product lineup, Razer or Corsair? 
We'll start with the headset. The revised H1500 from Corsair sounds much more balanced than the Kraken and is more comfortable for me, but unfortunately not only lacks RGB lighting, uh, but has a horrendous yellow accent to go along with the new tramp stamp logo. And so there you go. Frankly, I wouldn't use either of them, so we'll call the headset a draw, I guess. On to mice. Corsair would have had a shot at this if they'd done an M45 RGB instead of an M65 RGB, because I really like the shape of their mice, and the M45 uses an excellent sensor along with a firmware that doesn't gimp it too hard, a combination that's surprisingly difficult to find. But even though Corsair has more lighting zones, Due to the M65's use of a laser sensor with inherent acceleration, I have got to give the nod to the Razer Death Adder Chroma. Which leads us to keyboards and general thoughts, I guess. Both Razer's and Corsair's implementations feel a bit rushed to me, but in different ways. Razer hides it a lot better than Corsair because the Synapse 2.0 interface, even though the functionality hasn't been changed since the old keyboard and the lighting modes are very limited, is super easy to use. And this allows Razer to gracefully, without end user confusion, add more features as time goes on. Whereas Corsair built in shed loads of functionality on day one, lots of extra lighting modes and some really cool programmability that makes their RGB line a serious improvement over their original K line, but overlooked some basics like default profiles for lighting modes and then they went and shipped the keyboard with a 140 page manual that you will legitimately have to read in order to do anything with it. Not a great end user experience. But software will improve for both, so let's focus on the hardware trade-offs for now. Razer's backlight is noticeably brighter, but Corsair's is theoretically less prone to LED failure due to electrostatic discharge. Razer has pass-throughs for USB and audio, however poorly positioned they might be, while Corsair includes dedicated media keys. Razer includes macro keys on their $169.99 model, while Corsair provides them only on the $20 step-up K95 model. And in terms of looks, Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I think Razer's matte black and Corsair's brushed metal both look awesome. So if we say that those trade-offs all cancel each other out, the decision for me, and for you probably, is going to come down to the usage experience rather than the fancy lights. Corsair includes a wrist rest in the box, which personally I find to be very important, but you might not care, and they use Cherry MX switches, whereas Razer uses their Razer switches. So. Ultimately, that's the decision-making factor for me. Guys, thank you for watching. Like this video if you liked it. Dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment if your feelings are more complicated than this. Also, let me know, do you even care about RGB lighting? Like, does anyone actually care about this? Love to hear from you guys. Check out the link in the video description to support us if you want to give us a monthly contribution by a cool t-shirt like this one, or change your Amazon bookmark to one with our affiliate code so we get a small kickback whenever you buy keyboards and mice and headsets. That helps us out a lot. Thanks again for watching, and as always, don't forget to subscribe.